Uh, G'day YouTube, Quiet Penguin here, and today I'm going to do a deck tech with handlock. Uh, so I've been playing a bunch of ladder over the last few days, you know, slowly grinding my way up. And uh, after playing a whole bunch of different decks, I've uh, settled on handlock for this season. Uh, as the deck I'm going to use to get to legend for the second time now. Um, so basically I feel like uh, Handlock's in a really, really good spot now because people are starting to move away from Big Game Hunter. Uh, so basically the way the meta has progressed so far is that people started playing Dr. Boom. And Dr. Boom is really overpowered, which means that to beat Dr. Boom you have to play Big Game Hunter. But if everyone's playing Big Game Hunter, then minions that have like over like 7 or more attack are really, really bad. Which means people stop playing decks like Handlock. So handlock's gone, and then people start to adapt to having these big game hunters everywhere. So some people have started taking Dr. Boom out of their deck. Um, decks like Druid and Control Warrior, those sort of things, have started taking out the Alex Strazas or Ragnaros, um, that sort of thing, and they're starting to play uh, minions like Kelfazard or Sneed's Old Shredder, simply because they don't die to BGH. Um, so that's that's kind of where we're at, and then basically people are starting to react to this, and they're reacting to it by not playing BGH anymore. And if people aren't playing BGH anymore, then we want to be playing Handlock. Um, but even if you know you do run into a BGH or two, I mean I've run into a few so so far. Um, it's not that big a deal. I mean you've st you know if they can BGH or Big Game Hunter, uh, one of these guys, then you know you've still got three more. It's not that big a deal. Uh, so yeah, Handlock is the deck I've been playing lately. I've been doing really, really well with it. Uh, so let's get right into the deck tech, guys. I'm going to go through it card by card and let you know why I'm playing uh, these these cards. Uh, so first off, we're playing one copy of Mortal Coil. Uh, Mortal Coil is just like a really good uh, utility card. Um, it's really good at just finishing off, um, say, a 4 health minion after you've like Dark Bombed or Hellfire or finishing a, a minion off after you've like Shadow Flamed or you've hit it with like a Twilight Drake or an Antique Healbot or just some damage or whatever and then it's also really good at killing the uh, 1 health minions to begin with. Um, you know, stuff like Clockwork Gnome or Leper Gnome, that kind of thing. Um, so we're only playing one copy because it can be a little bit situational. Uh, it's really bad if you don't get to draw a card off it. You basically basically only playing it in situations where you're allowed to draw a card off it. Um, so that's why we're only playing one. It's just a really good utility card, but you don't really need it um, to win the game. Uh, next up, we've got two copies of Zombie Chow. Uh, Zombie Chow is really, really good against the aggressive decks. So it just lets you get a minion down early that's really difficult to sort of trade with uh, with another early game minion. So you generally get at least a one for one here, and you can sort of start to stem the bleeding a little bit. Um, it's also worth noting too that you can use this card uh, early just to get below uh, maximum hand size. Um, so what I mean by that, by that is this deck uh, uses the hero power, draw a card and take 2 damage on turn 2 and 3 in a ton of matchups. And if you're on the draw, so you're going to start off with 4 cards plus the coin, plus your draw for the first turn, so we're at 6 cards so far guys. Then on turn 2 we'd be on 7 cards, then if we life tap we'd be on 8 cards. Then on turn 3 we draw up to 9 cards. Then if we life tap again we're at 10 cards. And that means we will actually burn a card next turn. And we really don't want to do that. So in that kind of situation you can draw up to 10 cards. Use the 1 mana you'd have remaining because it's turn 3 remember guys. To chuck a zombie chow down. And that means you're back at 9 cards. You're back to drawing your normal card for the turn. And you're ready to go on your way. So zombie chow is also pretty good at that. It's pretty crucial to have... Something that you can sort of play in that scenario. Um, so that's why he's good. Uh, next up, we've got two copies of Dark Bomb. Dark Bomb's really, really important in the metagame right now just to, till, just to kill those pesky mech warpers, guys. Um, and that also kills, you know, stuff like Snow Chuggers and that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, being able to kill a mech warper on turn two is really, really important. Uh, it's also good, just like Zombie Chow, just stemming that early game aggression. Uh, so that's why we play two copies of those. Uh, next up is two copies of Ancient Watcher. Ancient Watcher doesn't look like really a card that's worth playing. It, you know, two mana, four, five sounds awesome, but it can't attack, so that sounds kind of crappy. Uh, but we've got a ton of ways to get value out of it in this deck. So the first one is Iron Beak Owl. Uh, so we can just silence it. And if we do that, we get an actual two mana Yeti. 
two mana four five that can attack that can do whatever and that's really really good for two mana that's insane uh, we can taunt it up in an aggressive match using either Sun Fury Protector or Defender of Argus. And if we do that, it's either, it's like, it, then it becomes this, like, really big taunt that our opponent just has to deal with. They're going to have to spend a pretty good card to deal with it, too. They're either going to have to, like, trade their minions into it, probably two minions. Or they're going to need to use, like, a swipe and a hero power or something if they're druid. Something like that, or maybe a fireball if you're playing against Mech Mage. Or, you know, like a uh, kill command if you're playing against a hunter deck. So... Uh, it, it's not the hardest card to deal with, but you're going to get value. And then, of course, the last card that it combos with in this deck is Shadow Flame. So on turn 6, uh, you can just plop out an Ancient Watcher and sacrifice it to Shadow Flame. And then you're basically getting a 2-card 6-mana Flame Strike. And, guys, Flame Strike's a really, really good card. And so it's just a really, really versatile card in this deck, Ancient Watcher. You're always happy to see it. Uh, so next up, you've got two copies of Ironbeak Owl. Uh, so Ironbeak's really good with the um, the Ancient Watcher, as we were talking about before. And it's also really good uh, to have access to a Silence Effect in Control Decks. Uh, and that's just so that you've really sort of always got to have an answer to whatever your opponent's playing when you're playing a Control Deck such as this one. Um, so for instance, in the Paladin matchup, uh, if you don't have an answer to the Tyrion, uh, you're in a lot of trouble with this deck, generally, I've found. Uh, even if you can, like, Siphon Soul the Tyrion to kill it or whatever, you know, you can kill it off with, like, a giant or whatever. Um, giving them that weapon, that extra 15 damage, is huge, guys. Makes it really, really hard uh, for you to win the game if they can get the Tyrion effect off. So having Iron Beak in that matchup, just for example, is pretty critical. Uh, so that's why we're playing two copies of that. Um, it's also really good against Sylvanas. Sylvanas can be a really, really big pain against this deck because they can just plop it down and they're going to be able to steal one of your really big minions like a Sneeds or one of your Giants and stuff. Uh, so it's also really good in one of those situations as well. Uh, so next up, we've got two copies of Sun Fury Protector. Um, so its job here is to combo with either the Ancient Watcher, like we were talking about, uh, Twilight Drake, or one of your Giants. And so basically, you're sort of trying to get into a position with this deck where you can just play a big giant or a big creature like a Twilight Drake. Uh, taunt it up so you're no longer taking any more face damage because this deck's taking a lot of damage um, just off its hero power. Uh, so you can't afford to take too much damage or you will lose. Um, so yeah, Sun Fury Protector is really good for that. Um, you can also occasionally protect something, but that doesn't really come up that often in this deck. It's mainly used to just completely halt your opponent's aggression just you get to the stage sort of where you can just lock out the game with taunts um it's also really good in combination with the six sixes that you get from lord draxus and i'm going to talk a little bit more about him later on um so we've got next up one copy of hellfire so hellfire is for those aggressive matchups where you just really really need a board clear i'm only playing one because it actually does three damage to all characters so that's including yourself and we can't afford to take too much damage. Um, it is one of those cards, though, that's really important in the aggressive matchups or and against Paladin specifically. Uh, against Paladin, you really need to have an answer for their muster for battle before that just gets out of control. Um, and Hellfire lets you do that, so that's why we're playing one copy. Uh, it's worth noting, too, that if you're starting to come up against a ton of aggressive decks uh, on ladder, definitely put in a second copy of these this one, guys, but uh, I'm only playing one for now. Uh, so next up, we've got two copies of Shadow Flame. Um, so Shadow Flame can be used with a one of your Giants if you really need to. Say your Giant's on low health, it's only got, say, two or three uh, health left or something, and you just sort of Shadow Flame it and just kill off your opponent's board. Um, almost no basically nothing survives. If you're Shadow Flaming a Giant, their board is gone. Um, so you can also Shadow Flame off an Ancient Watcher, which, again, is like a Flame Strike, how we were talking before. Or, uh, if you've already got Lord Draxus out, um, so basically Lord Draxus uh, changes your hero ability to 2 mana, make a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, so you can't draw anymore, you can't life tap anymore, uh, so instead you're making 2 mana 6-6s six, every single turn, guys. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on, but basically, uh, with uh, Lord Draxus' hero ability, Shadow Flame becomes 6 mana, deals 6 damage to all your opponent's minions. Pretty sick. Alright, next up we've got one copy of Defender of Argus. It's basically a more expensive Sun Fury Protector. 
uh, that also gives uh, like a plus one plus one which can be relevant uh, for example it can make your twilight drake uh, kill off a sludge belcher instead of just almost getting there uh, but we only play one copy simply because it's more expensive so because it combos with other cards this taunting effect so I'm talking about Sun Fury Protector and Defender of Argus here uh, because it combos with another card you don't ever just play it out on a naked board you generally want to play it with like a giant or a twilight drake or something the cheaper option is better so that's why we go with two copies of Sun Fury and only one copy of Defender of Argus uh, now I have seen uh, some handlock decks play two copies of this card but I've been pretty happy with one I haven't really needed the second uh, so next up guys is two copies of Twilight Drake and Twilight Drake is one of your main minions in this deck guys okay he's insane um, so if you're playing this guy on turn 4 he's almost always like at least like a 4-8 or something sometimes he's even a 4-10 with this deck just because of the life tap you can always have a really big hand when you're playing this deck and that means this guy is insane he's just a better yeti for this deck it's, he's super super good guys he's because he has so much health, he's basically a mega, mega sticky minion. It's really hard for your opponent to kill this guy off with just one card. Uh, it is worth noting, though, that it's really weak to a silence effect. Um, so something like Iron Beak Owl or an Earth Shock uh, if you're playing against a Shaman. Or mainly the most common silence is Keeper of the Grove uh, from Druid. Uh, but apart from that, this guy is super, super solid. Uh, so next up is two copies of Antique Healbot. Uh, so Healbot's really, really good in this deck. Um... As I've sort of been saying before, you generally take a ton of damage uh, when you're playing this deck just from just uh, from your hero power. So your hero power, of course, is draw a card and take two damage. And Antique Healbot heals for eight. So it's basically letting you draw four cards. And so like a five mana, three, three minion that draws four cards is utterly insane, guys. So you're always happy to play two of this. Uh, next up is two copies of Sludge Belcher. Uh, Sludge Belch is pretty uh, common in control decks like this. Just a really good taunt, a ton of value, it's sticky, um, and just helps to stem the bleeding. So just a really all-around solid card here. Uh, next up, we've got two copies of Siphon Soul. Um, so Siphon Soul is just your catch-all removal spell in this deck. Uh, you name it, kills it dead. Dr. Boom, um, like a, can kill a giant. Uh, can kill Ysera, Alexstrasza, Ragnaros, y you name it guys, if you need to kill a Sludge Belcher, dead. Twilight Drake, dead. Mechanical Yeti, dead. Mech Warper if you need to, dead. You name it, it kills it, dead. Uh, and because it's such a versatile card, it means that we don't need to play other cards like Big Game Hunter, something more situational. Uh, even though it does cost more, um, it's hard removal guys, Just uh, and being able to restore free health as well is a pretty nice boon, just a really nice uh, add-on there. Uh, so next up is a copy of Sylvanas Windrunner, so uh, as you guys already know, Sylvanas is just insane in general. Uh, but in this deck it's also got a combo with Shadow Flame, um, so if you've got 10 mana you can play out a, a Sylvanas, and then Shadow Flame it deal 5 damage to all your opponent's minions, and then if anything can survive that 5 damage, Sylvanas will take it. Uh, so say they play out like a giant or a Dr. Boom or something, you can wipe off their board and then kill and then take it. So it's worth noting that you can do that. Um, doesn't always come up, but Sylvanas is just a generally really, really good card. Uh, next up, we've got a copy of Sneed's Old Shredder. Um, so I'm playing this over so, something like Dr. Boom, just as a late game threat. Uh, mainly because it's so hard for decks like Paladin or Control Warrior to actually deal with Sneed's. Um, the fact that they're going to have to deal with two really big minions most of the time, depending on what you get off the old Shredder, um, it's just really, really good value. Um, so I've been super impressed with this guy, and I'm looking forward. I think he's going to start to see more and more play uh, as we go through this season. Uh, so next up is a copy of Lord Jaraxxus, and he makes all your control matchups so much better, guys. So much better. Um, the fact that he also heals you, so say you've like gotten down to like 5 health or 10 health or even 14 health. When you play Lord Jaraxxus, you're going to jump right back up to 15, similar to playing uh, Alex Straza and targeting yourself. Um, so he comes with a weapon that has 3 attack and 8 durability, which means given enough time, he can actually do 24 damage on his own. Which is huge, guys. Absolutely huge. And then he also changes your hero power from the life tap ability to 2 mana, make a 6-6. Six, six. Every single turn, guys. Every turn, you just bam, 2 mana, 6-6. Six, six. 2 mana, 6-6. Six, six. 2 mana, 6-6. Six, six. 
It's insane. It's really, really hard for some of the control decks to deal with. Uh, basically, something like Control Warrior or the Priest decks, they just can't beat an endless stream of 6-6s. Six Especially when you can do things, you can like Shadow Flame them off, or you can Sun Fury Protector to give them Taunt. It's just really, 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 really powerful ability. Um, it is worth noting, though, that Lore Draxus doesn't make your life total 15. Like, it actually sets your your barrier to 15. So you can't, like, after you've played Lord Draxus, you can't heal over 15 with Healbot. So say you're at, you've got uh, Draxus in play and you're at 14 life now, you're not at 15 anymore. Uh, Healbot will only heal one then. It won't heal right back up to 22. Your maximum is now 15. And that also means that uh, Molten Giant gets a lot worse after you've played Lord Draxus, simply because um, now your life total is 15, so even if you're at one life now, uh, Molten Giant's still going to cost uh, 6 to play. Uh, yeah, so generally you want to play Molten Giants before you play Lord Draxus if you can, but uh, if you can't, you can't. Okay, so now we're into the heart and soul of the deck, guys, the Giants. So first up is two copies of Mountain Giant, uh, who just, they both synergize really well with this deck because of the hero power. Uh, so being able to draw a card makes your hand size generally really, really big, uh, which makes Mountain Giant really, really cheap. And you're also taking a bunch of damage because every time you draw an extra card, you're taking two, which makes Molten Giant way, way cheaper. So as you can see there, guys, they're really both really synergistic in this deck. Uh, you can play them both really cheap. Uh, Mountain Giant, you can often play on turn four. Uh, and a, just a turn four, eight, eight is disgusting, guys. It's really, really overpowered. It's way above curve. Uh, compare that to something like a Yeti, like a Chillwind Yeti. Uh, it's like double the attack. Like, it's just crazy, crazy good. Uh, and Molten Giant's also really, really good in the aggressive uh, matchups, just because they're dealing so much damage to you. Uh, you can often play this guy for like two or three mana. Sometimes you even get to play it for free. Um, so yeah, both the Giants are really, really good with this deck. Uh, so thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm going to be doing a bunch of uh, matchup analysis with this deck over the next few days. Uh, so you'll get to see me play this list against basically every other deck in the meta. So you'll know uh, how to mulligan, what cards to play around, how to play the deck, and so on. Uh, so please like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Make sure you're subscribing to check out the matchup analysis with this deck. And I'll see you guys in the next video.